According to reports, 19-year-old Nick Eli Box of Bexon was driving his grey Suzuki Vitara in the Moshi Grosile area when it veered off the road and capsized. Eli Box attended the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School where he graduated in 2015. The deceased was a young promising cricketer who played for the Windward's under-17 team. Eli Box is a second sports personality who has died via a motor vehicular accident for 2018. On Saturday, January 20th, about 12.30 a.m., national footballer 19-year-old Bradley Cyril and 18-year-old Brandon Santoma also lost their lives when the vehicle in which they were traveling ran off the Vidbutai Highway and crashed into a wall. Authorities have been appealing to motorists to use the roads with caution. For the DBS News World, I am Don Nicholas. Thank you very much, Don, for this report as we commence this evening's Newsmaker Live right here on DBS Television. And you've heard by now that we've recorded so far for this year some four road fatalities. The latest, as you heard in that report, featuring that of Nick Elibox, a 19-year-old who perished during the wee hours of Sunday. And we've been grappling with this issue over the last several years in St. Lucia, and today we heard from an official from the traffic department reporting that last year you had some 17 road fatalities, and before that you had less road fatalities, and certainly that is an area of immense concern for us in St. Lucia as we continue to grapple with this problem. My guests this evening of the Traffic Department of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Corporal 185 Jonathan Sergist and Constable 50 Ron Chico. Welcome to the program. Yes, Tim, thanks Thank so you, much. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for having us. Gentlemen, what accounts for the problem? Let's start with you, Corporal. Well, Tim, I would say the number one thing on our roads is the speeding. And uh, if persons take more care and exercise more patience and tolerance, that will alleviate the majority of the road crashes and fatalities that we have. Why do you think there's a lack of patience on the roads? Honestly, Tim, I really do not know the answer to that, but if persons just exercise just a little more patience, definitely we won't be having this kind of carnage on our roads. Constable, that seems to be a very short supply. Mm -hmm. um, when you experience or you're investigating a collision or crash, I, I get, you get the opportunity to speak with um, the drivers. What are they saying to you? Well, Tim, I mean, every accident is different. You have different circumstances, every accident is different. But from my experience, I've been investigating accidents for the past 12 years. One of the major or the main contributing factors to accidents has to do with driver error and driver attitude or behavior. I think we, like I said, on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest, I'll give our drivers maybe a 3 in terms of the attitude towards driving. As a feeling grid. Feeling grid. Mm -hmm. Because the amount of things that you see on the road every day, Tim, it's just appalling. Why are we so in a rush? I don't know. And that's one of the main concerns. We are always in a hurry. We don't want to slow down. We're always speeding. Why? Somebody, you'll be driving on the, uh, on the roadway, and a driver will overtake three, three, four vehicles only to indicate left and stop just a little higher, up, or to indicate and turn right into a junction when he would have just waited and just indicate right. So I don't know where th that's the problem, the, the rush and the anxiety and then we see the results of it all the time we see the accident we see the amount of damage you know incurred by um caused by those accidents and then persons still don't heed but while you attribute the problem to speeding and impatience and so on um corporal do you think that the police should take some responsibility because if you make a greater presence if you make your presence felt on our roads don't you think that will inhibit the speeding cause drivers to miraculously be more patient? Tim, it's, it's um, you saying that uh, it makes it look like the police is not there, but the police is there. We are there on the road. And as much as we're not there to, in the way or manner that we would love to be, but we are there. The human resource 
that is available to us does not permit us to be the, the way that the general public would want us to be. Or is it a case the way that you should be? Well, if you put it that way, the way that we should be, but the limited human resources that we have, we have a little bit of a we have, it's just that we cannot do it the way that we should be. It's not that we want to be that. So what do you think can be done on the part of the police? Well, like, um, like the corporal said, our presence, I will agree that we, we need to show a greater presence on our roadways. But like, like he said again, with the limited human resource, we can only be there. You know, we can't be there 24 hours a day. But Tim, I will. I will twenty hours a day. I mean, that will be stretching it a bit. Right. But um, at least ensuring that you have a greater presence on our road. Because the impression has been given that traffic cops are on duty um, between eight o'clock and let's say four or five. Um, on weekends, probably non-existent at all. Is that the no, no, well, yeah. yeah. well, you have traffic officers available around the clock. You'll have a greater presence during the day. And at night, it is limited to maybe two, three officers who want call for to deal with traffic accidents. In the north of the island? Well, all around the island. Only two police officers on duty? Well, on call? At night and on weekends, because you see, the, you have to accommodate, you have to, due to the, again, due to the limited resources that you have, you have from Friday evening until Monday morning. So when you have, let's say, you have eight officers detailed to work that weekend, and you have to give, each person works a tour of 12 hours. Okay, and then one they hand over to the other set, and so sometimes when you on duty for the twelve hours, and it has happened even last Saturday, it happened. You have about five accidents at once, and two officers have to respond to all five. Now, depending on the severity of the accidents, you know, the you might have to wait a little longer because the officers will have to take a little longer to process one scene before they get to the other scene. So that's a, that's where we are now. That that will be a sufficient number of police officers. Let's say for the early 1960s. Yes, when we had a lot less we vehicles. We had a lot less vehicle, and we had a the lot less. The population smaller. Exactly, mm. the population was not anything like it is now. So sometimes um, during the early 60s, 70s, like you said, the amount of police officers that were on on the road or even on the beat, the amount that we have now would be more than sufficient, but. In this modern day and age, it is really not sufficient. I like to be the, the, the fly on the wall when you're discussing this with um, senior officers of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the Police Commissioner, the Police Welfare Association, the Minister of National Security and Home Affairs. Is that an issue that you're impressing upon the authorities? Very much so, Tim. Every time there is a, a meeting, we inform the officers that we do not have enough personnel at the department. And they in turn, in turn bring it up to the hierarchy who also says that they are trying their best to see what they can do. Yep. We only recently had some new persons come to the department which has made it a little easier in terms of um, dealing with accidents. But we're still not sufficiently managed. Um, um, manned. Manned. Amidst this um, deficiency and this shortfall in staff and so on, what are you expecting from the motoring public? What are you expecting for drivers? Are you ex expecting that on their own accord that they'll drive carefully, that they will not be reckless? Is, is, is that realistic to expect that on the part but of some people mm -hmm. who, 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 have the, who are of a particular mindset? But Tim, I, I always say that, um, yes, we have a responsibility as the traffic department, by extension the Royal Social Police Force, but also I, I personally believe, 
at 90% of the responsibility lies on the driver. Very much so. Because if you're behind a steering wheel and you're driving a vehicle, you must be disciplined. You must know that there are rules, there are regulations, there are speed limits that you must abide by. And any, and any disciplined person will have no problem in abiding by our rules. But that's not the reality of, of, of our society, of society generally. Well, People well, playing by the rules. Yes, so what do we say to a gun-toting individual? Um, you, you should not be armed if I find arm. You should not go out there and, and, and burgle people, people's homes and their vehicles and so on. Is that what, what, what the message that we were Tim, preaching? I honestly believe that right now parents should, have, should sit down with the children. I mean, a parent should know that, their son, that the children love to drive, they love vehicles I mean, from a young age. From a little boy, two, three years, you see the children have the trucks and especially little boys. Because, I mean, statistics will show that majority of our serious and fatal accidents, the drivers are always males. You know, you have fatalities where drivers are females, but it's, it's a very rare occasion. So from an early age, you know, for example, you, 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 you have a son, the son just got the license, you need to put that child to sit down and speak to the child the same way you put your child to sit down and have a sex talk. Driving should be the same. Tell them the responsibilities that they should have whilst behind that steering wheel. Obey the, the laws, don't get in the problems with the police, don't park indiscriminately, and you know, you have to start somewhere. And most, most persons, when they get a license, and I mean, do you think parents on a daily basis will brief the children about driving? I doubt this very much. Now, Tim, with reference to what you just said, it's not that persons do not know what to do. They very much in the know as to what to do. Whenever you see we have a traffic check, Tim, that is when drivers have all the memory recollection. They know they don't have their seatbelt. They see a traffic check taking place. They know to pull the seatbelt to put it on. Why it's only when you see the police that you remember and to put it on. When it's because you know that you ought to have it. That's why you're fighting to put it on. And sometimes they have it and they're still trying to see if they <laughs> try you to know, put it on. Some of know. them are so, you know, careless. It's, it's like they have, like he, <laughs> like Ron says, they have it on, but they're so non custom of wearing it that they're looking to pull it when they see the police and, and they're wearing it. They know they're not supposed to do something, but when they see the police, that's when they want to do the right thing. We don't have to be like slave masters. You know you're not supposed to do X, do, do X. It has to start with the drivers. Of late, we've had the road fatalities mainly involved males and teenagers. Mm -hmm. Do you think generally that most of the accidents are involving teenagers? No, I would um, across the board. No, I'll say uh, I'll say uh, a small percentage. Yeah. Tim, let's take a look at some stats. Today is the seventh of January. From the first, sorry, seventh of February. From the first mm -hmm. of January till now, well, to the thirty-first of January, we've had one hundred eight accidents. You know, one hundred eight accidents. For that January. is in the Castries Basin. One hundred eight accidents for one month. Was it what crashes, collisions? Yeah, yeah collisions, crashes, whatever. For the for last year, which is uh, which is last year, from the thirty first of December last year, we've had a total of eight hundred eighty two accidents for a year. That is way too much. Yep, eight hundred eighty two, and the year before was our highest year at seven hundred and thirty one. Two thousand sixteen. It's only for the north. Yes, only for the north. north yes. Well, not even grossly involved, just Castries. Castries. Wow. Well, so we we've surpassed. 2016, so the I more than 100 accidents, you know. And you have a handful of officers who have to investigate 882 accidents sh shared among them. It's a lot of work. And a lot of the accidents is because of simple errors and persons are in a rush, you know. And a lot of persons need sensitization to them, I can tell you that. Yes, and be that as it may, that out of the total number that um, he speaks of, there may be some fender benders and minor in nature but that's not the issue the issue is all of these could have been avoided, avoided. Well, and that's avoided. what we say do what is right do what is supposed to be done to avoid these things from happening do you think that there's need to implement maybe stricter or stringent measures more stringent measures uh, for persons to qualify to be on the roads 
I wouldn't say there should be Do you think it's more because stringent measures. It's just a matter of persons taking the time and applying the driving rules. Team, you would because I'm really trying to zero in into what is the pro we have identified the problem, but mm -hmm. how to rectify the problem? Mm -hmm. Team, I think re-edifying persons is it's it's part. There is a lot defensive of driving. You think man defensive make it mandatory? Driving, well, it, it is mandatory. It is mandatory it is for mandatory. all drivers. For all yes, drivers. after yes. you've gotten your license, you, you get a provisional license for one year before it's renewed, and before that license is renewed. If you have not done the defense, this came into driving. effect when? Because uh, I got my license uh, uh, about a thousand years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it came into it effect some time ago. Some time, some not, time ago. Not, not too far not, from. Not, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe for the past five years or before. No, more than that. More than five more years? Yes. Yeah, so I'm a license for. When you minute. go and get it renewed, if you have not done the defensive driving program, you will not get it renewed. You will still be given a provisional license. Because you're asking for some kind of behavioral change. Mm -hmm. How do you think that this can be instituted? <laughs> what kind of measures can be Kim, implemented? First of all, what kind of, so what kind of deterrence can be put in place? Exactly. I believe, Tim, that we at a stage now that, um, let's take example the Bexon Highway. Well, it's Bexon Road, sorry. I think when you say highway, I think some persons are confused. I don't believe that Bexon is a highway, period. Bexo is a main road which runs through a residential area. Yes. You have houses a mere feet away from the road. It's not a highway. And Tim, I believe, and majority of our accidents, well, a, 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 a vast number of our accidents have occurred on that highway. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have a serious accident on Bexon Highway, just know it's a almost fatal or it's a very serious accident, serious damage, serious personal injury. I believe that we have come to the point where people will not slow down. You can put a hundred signs on the road saying drive at 40, people will still speed. We need to start to slow people down physically. Whether it means to in, in, install speed bump. Now, I've had that discussion with persons and persons have, you know, they have all sorts of reasons why we shouldn't put speed bumps. I believe they should put speed bumps along the backs of the road. There are certain areas to me that are key to put speed bumps. Because you have schools, you have churches, you have gas stations, you have health centers. You know, people drive up to this morning, I was on the backs of the highway with revisiting the scene with the magistrate of the just caught at Diglo Junction. And whilst we are there to see the <laughs> to see the method of driving of of, of persons, you know, I'm seeing two tr a truck and a car at high speed, and the car is overtaking the truck, almost at the corner. And they pass. They see the police. They just still do it. So we need to put stringent measures in place, like you said, put speed bumps, slow them down. If putting the speed bumps will cause you to reach late f five minutes. Well, let's leave home earlier. Leave home five minutes earlier. That's but, how I but we have allowed the two lawbreakers to get away. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, on on, on the Bexo Road, you, you said mm -hmm. um, it occurred. Police, uh, well, you ha you just happened to be there with, yeah, we were with the magistrate, some, uh, right? But considering it's a busy road, mm -hmm. again, we have to go back to the initial point that we need more police officers to be policing um, some of those roads, um, Corporal. Well, Tim, there's not much that I can say. But when you have a staff, a complement staff of 42, right? Yes, 42, 42 persons. persons. Yeah. That includes the management, the management and the administration. administration. It encompasses that amount of persons. When you take out admin and the management, management you're left with almost nothing because one chief would have like 13 persons. And yeah. out of that 13, you have persons who will be on rest day. You have persons who will be off after working a night shift. And on the day in question, you may just have nine persons. You have some persons five. in the city. Some, yeah, sometimes five. Sometimes you have, you have persons in the city to man the city, certain points in the city, doing city patrol. And you must have persons for investigation purposes. Mm -hmm. You so have outriders. At some um, point in time, these very same persons that you have doing investigations has to, including himself, has to leave and go and do an escort as an outrider. Now, I suspect that you will, after this program, become a very unpopular constable because you, you're <laughs> suggesting that we put speed bumps um, along that road I, at Bexon. Yes. But Tim, it, it is a reality. Tim, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, you're saying? Tim, I was born and raised in Bexon. 
Okay. Okay, I, I born and raised in Bexar. I have seen too many people die on Bexar Road. I have investigated too many fatal accidents on Bexar Road. I have investigated too many accidents on Bexar Road. People drive there too fast. Is Any that? other roads you think where um, speed bumps should be placed? Tim, if you look at Millennium Highway, you know, we ha we don't have many accidents happening on Millennium Highway. No. And why? Why do you think? Because the road is uneven. You cannot drive there how you want because the road is uneven. You drive fast, you will overturn your vehicle quickly. That's why you don't get many. You will get accidents there, yes, but it's, it's, very, it's, few. it's very few compared to Bexo, compared to VG2 Shock, compared to um, Grozile Highway. Mm -hmm. Very or few or accidents. Or the Island Highway. Highway. Very few accidents on, because the road is uneven, so people will take their time. So they, you, you understand? So you see, it? people need to, <laughs> there needs to be some physical thing to restrain persons from driving fast now. Yes, you can put officers. I agree with you, and I agree that we can do a lot more. I agree that if we have officers on the road, it will yeah, curb on the amount of accidents we have. I agree with yeah. that. But for them, while well, like the corporal said, we are doing the best that we can with the, the limited, limited resources, that we, have. resources that we have. We're doing the best. But I have a report from DBS's um, Kendall Burton, and that report was filed on Monday. Um, where the Chief Transport Officer, Lenita Joseph, is calling on drivers to take greater responsibility for their own safety. Once again, we we'll go to that report by DBS's Kendall Burton. And the majority of them have sadly been teenagers. In the most recent case, Nikki Leibox, a 19-year-old resident of Bexstock Castries, vet off the road, colliding with an earth embankment. We received a call at about 2.11 in the morning. Um, the units responded as per protocol, uh, fire appliance with extrication equipment, ambulance. However, there was no need for extrication. The, there was a gentleman occupying the driver's seat. Uh, he, according to the reports that we received, uh, received several uh, the, sorry, severe face trauma. Um, he was packaged as per ambulance protocol and transported to the Victoria Hospital. Four other individuals on board the vehicle escaped with only minor injuries. The incident comes just weeks after another crash claimed two teenage lives and months after two families laid their teenage daughters to rest after another fatal crash. Every fatality brings calls for better road signs and markings, more police patrols and tougher legislation. By, um Northwest, they happen to have two solid white lines on the road, which, which indicates that you cannot swing right, you cannot cross those lines or, take, or go across them, but um, there are exceptions to that. For example, if there is a adjacent junction, you can't cross those lines. So motorists can still cross to go into Northwest as a result, when really the correct signage or correct road marking should have been um, diagonal lines, or they call them um, chevrons, which would indicate that you cannot cross those lines at any point in time. You have to treat those lines as a wall. But the head of the transport board says while there is need for all of those things, without drivers taking personal responsibility for their safety, the carnage will continue. Yes, we can do all the safety programs and so on. At the end of the day, people have to take personal responsibility for their actions when they get behind the wheel. And this is probably the most critical um, strategy that we can employ persons to make sure that once they get behind the wheel of the vehicle that they are responsible for their actions. In addition to that, we want to be able to complement those strategies with um, improving the road infrastructure. The Department of Infrastructure is responsible for making sure that the necessary road furniture is in place, so the crash barriers, the speed bumps and so on, making sure that all the markings are in place, the road signs are in place. And again, I'm coming back to the personal responsibility that even though we do all of those things, sometimes people don't pay attention. Over the years, there have been calls for the reintroduction of radar guns and the introduction of breathalyzers. The department says it is seriously looking at those options and is working with the police to introduce both this calendar year. At least two years ago, we had sent a couple of officers to Trinidad mm. to see how it's being implemented because they do um, um, apply that methodology in Trinidad. They use both the, the speed guns and the breathalyzers. So we wanted to see what legislation they had in place. How do they actually roll it out? So when they go out on the road and they have an operation, how do they um, apply the legislation? You know, even when you go to court, what documents do you present? 
So we have had discussions. We have some um, equipment that we are looking at. So the decision for us now is to, uh, to prescribe the type of equipment that we will be using. All of this is happening during the UN's Decade of Action for Road Safety, which runs from 2011 to 2020. The decade was officially proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in March 2010. Its goal is to stabilize and reduce the forecast level of road traffic deaths around the world. But what has St. Lucia been doing to reduce its numbers? Joseph says, not nearly enough. As long as people die on the roads, we've not done enough. Because it means somewhere, somehow, something has slipped, something has missed. When the year started, I did send out a challenge saying, you know, I would like for 2018 to be a year of no fatalities in San Lucia. And, you know, we're already in February and we've had two or three fatalities, which is unfortunate. So my thinking is as long as people die on the roads, it, we have failed somehow. Also of concern for Joseph is the number of young men losing their lives on local roads. It's one shared by the Fire and Emergency Department, which is also concerned about the number of young people, male and female, generally getting hurt or losing their lives in accidents. There are several circumstances that come together to create what we call accidents, motor vehicle accidents, speed, uh, familiarity with the area, and a lot of other factors. So we cannot say, I guess there are more young people out on the road at those particular hours of the morning uh, as compared to older persons. So it is only natural that we would have more younger people involved in those types of accidents. The United Nations resolution sets the goal for the decade of action for road safety to stabilize and then reduce the forecast level of road traffic fatalities by increasing activities conducted at the national, regional and global levels. The resolution calls on all member states to set road safety targets to be achieved during the decade. And while governments are expected to lead on the implementation of activities, the resolution specifically calls for a multi-sectoral approach that includes academia, the private sector, civil society, the media, victims and their families. Just two years shy of the end of the decade, there seems to be general agreement that little has been done locally to meet those targets. For the DBS News World, Kendall Burton report. Thank you, Brothers Kendall, for this comprehensive report which was filed on Monday during the DBS News World. Officers, we heard from the Chief Transport Officer. One of the main points she made was that officers were sent to Trinidad and Tobago two years ago to look at the use of breathalyzers and uh, radar guns and so on. What has happened to this? As far as I'm concerned, it's the ministry is the one that has to take up the mantle from there because, like they said, they went down to Trinidad and came back and certain decisions were made and right now it's in the hands of the ministry. So the, we, the ministry has failed to implement it? Well, implement the, the, the recommendations? Is, well, you see, the minister has a, a, a lot to play in what goes on with our department. Whatever is required for us to be using, the minister has to sanction it. But you think it's a waste of time in the finances, a waste of time to send the police officers over to Trinidad, the European? No, I, would, I wouldn't say it's a waste of time. But what have they done with that knowledge? Well, that I cannot answer. I could only tell you that the ministry has to sanction whatever tools that we are going to use for the purpose of whether it be urine testing, blood testing, or breathalyzing. Yep. So it's the ministry that has to sanction and approve whatever apparatus that we are going to use. So Miss uh, Joseph rightly said that they're in the process. So I don't know how far this process is, but we are waiting until they provide us with this equipment and the legislation to make it legal for us to use. Then, but this is a very long and arduous process. What happens now if, if um, somebody is suspected of driving under the influence of alcohol? How you you work? With, how do you deal with that particular scenario? And if somebody you suspect somebody is speeding, how do you deal with that issue? Well, in terms of the speeding, Tim, I mean, if there is little that you can do presently to charge so much for speeding, because like um, the corporal said, up section seventy six. Five says that the minister shall prescribe equipment for use in measuring vehicle speed on the roads. So this cannot stand up in court. I saw this guy no. and he was speeding. Nope. 
kind of something. And the, the, guy, the guy would just say, no, I was not speeding. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What do you need to understand, Tim? We, our job is to enforce. Okay? We are law enforcement officers. We are to enforce the law or the laws that are present. We have been making recommendations and inquiries for years as to the radar guns, the breathalyzer tests. But like you said, it goes down to the minister. The minister shall pre prescribe. Even for the breathalyzer, he says that uh, for the purposes of his section, the minister shall prescribe the intoxication test to be used and the method and equipment to be used for determining the proportion of alcohol or drugs in one's urine, blood, or breath. Sure. So until that is done, we, we, you know, we are neither here nor there. So the drivers are not really to be blamed because if you, if through some deficiency in the system, um, you allow somebody to get away with something, they will get away with it yes. if they know. Okay. Um, does not put you all in an even precarious situation um, right now, in a difficult situation, when we can say tonight that you really cannot charge people for speeding. Well, it's tr well, we have to speak the truth. The truth is, I cannot charge you for speeding. Okay, I can always, you know. <laughs> I the bottom line is, Tim, if you charge someone for speeding, when you, you get to the court, that the person was speeding. This person lawyers up, and the lawyer will ask you, okay. prove to the court that this person was speeding at that speed. What will you say to yeah. the court? You have no equipment to show that this is what you recorded. So I know to be comical, but if you were to record somebody speeding, speeding on your phone, mm -mm, it's not it's still does not stand up in court. It's not because it has to, yeah, because it the device, the device has to be sanctioned and made law by the minister. By the minister. That's and that minister is the minister with responsibility for okay. transport. Yes, that's correct. In your, in your estimation, uh, you say yeah. It's what? In some cases, for example, in accidents, it's a little different in accidents where you can use the physical evidence present to not to say that the person was speeding. Reckless driving? Yeah, well, but mm -hmm. based on certain evidence or I that you may collect on a scene, the magistrate may be inclined to think that the person was speeding or speed may have been a factor. For example, if you have tire impressions of about a hundred, um, you know, along 60 meters, 100 meters, you know, and then you realize that the person could not have stopped the vehicle before after applying brakes after so long yeah. a degree of speed you know there was speed has speed was a factor in the accident but in to say that you were speeding i was on the road and i saw you driving 40 um 80 miles an hour on a 40 mile per hour road without an apparatus at not admissible in court what about people driving under the influence of alcohol again uh, yes only your observations and um as an investigator what i will do for example if I investigate an accident, I will put a note in my pocketbook that I observed that the driver had difficulty standing up. I smelled what appeared to be alcohol on his it's breath. Yeah. He appeared to have slurred speech, you understand? Know, and then you can bring that into evidence. And based on your, your based on your prof like the magistrate will allow that evidence in because of your um, experience as a traffic officer. Mm -hmm. Okay. But to see that person was drunk but or under influence, but it appears he can get away on a technicality if, he, if again, if he lawyers up. Yeah, well, well, sometimes, but sometimes yeah. it works in in, in the, the favor of the favor police. Of the police, yes. So this this is what we have to go from. Yeah. Now, what we do, for example, if you involve in an accident and the officer suspects, and I have done it many times, I will impound the vehicle and take the person into custody, then call a family member to come and take the person home and drive the vehicle away. I will not allow the person to continue driving, yeah. you know, being that the person appears or to be under the influence. If not, the person may tell you they do not want you to call anybody, but they will just stay at the station and when they get sober, you can allow, leave. allow them to leave. Well, again, people, like, people are getting a better, better picture of what is happening with regard to the challenges that um, you individuals face in the traffic department of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, but this is no excuse. Definitely, um, the responsibility is still that of your um, is yours to ensure that the roads um, are safe. Not as our student. Well, I mean, don't you think foremost the responsibility is that of the police to maintain um, law and order on yeah. our roads? Well, that yeah. is our well, responsibility. Yes, that's yeah. what it is. That is our responsibility. But all stakeholders oh. must play their part. Play their part. For example, the Ministry of Transport. Now, that is a problem that I have. Majority of our roads in this country are unmarked. 
and I'm talking about the lane markings, the, 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 the divisions, a majority of our roads are unmarked. And that can assist you while driving. Because, for example, if you're not familiar with a portion of road, if you're a visitor to St. Lucia, if you're a visitor to St. Lucia and you're driving on a narrow road, sometimes you have to be you have to be driving dead center because you cannot gauge the left side of the road, the edge of the road. If you're driving while it's raining heavily at night, your windows are up, your your windows are tinted, you have difficulty seeing in front of you because the roads are unmarked. Whereas if the roads were marked, you could have seen in ahead of you and you could have driven within your lane. And, and a lot of the times that is, a, that is some of the causes of the accidents too. Persons don't stay in the lane because the roads are not marked. The roads are, the roads are just not marked. And uh, with, the, with the help of the cat eyes on the road, Yes, it helps as well because yes. if the cut eye is on the road, when you veer off into the center, you will feel, you will like feel that you're going over the cut eye. So that means you have to come back onto your lane. So, obviously, Chico is very much on point. That is one thing I wish, Tim, to see. I wish to see that as all of our roads, or majority of our roads, are marked. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. um, I submitted a document um, just before I went on vacation for the city uh, where signs are not available and markings and some of it was done but the rest has not been taken up. So now that I'm back from vacation I am going to attempt to find out and uh, make another attempt to get the markings done because even some of our um, tickets get thrown out of the uh, of the courts because of the lack of markings on the road. Is is there a shortage of paint on the island? Well, that, that I that don't not think so. That, that should not be, be the issue. the issue. The fact of the matter is, it is not being done. Because everybody has a reason for something not being done, Tim. So I'm just trying to get to the right. bottom of, of this particular issue. You see, let me just on one more point on the road markings, how important it is. I'm certain if I was to ask the first 10 callers, while it's driving on the road and you see a solid white line in the center of the road, what does it mean? A lot of persons don't know. It means that you should not overtake. When the center line, the center road, when the center line is solid, you should not overtake. Or where there are gaps and the gaps are very short between them. There's a meaning. It means that there's a hazard ahead. The hazard can be a junction, a T-junction. Oh, and when the, the gaps are wide, oh, that means you can safely overtake. overtake. A lot of persons don't know these things, so we need sensitization. That is why the importance of the road markings. For example, remember when the Millennium Highway was first marked? When you just when you leave the first tunnel going to Kalisak, mm -hmm. you realize there's a wide portion of the road there and there are some chevron markings. People use that to overtake all the time. And the purpose of that section of road there is to accommodate any vehicle making a right turn. So if you're going to make a right turn up to Millennium Heights, you will coming from north, coming from Kalisak, mm -hmm. you will enter the you will enter that piece of road, you'll wait. When the road is clear, you'll turn right. Turn right yes. But mm -hmm. persons use it to overtake because it's wide. You're not supposed to pass on those lines. Sensitization again. Is, is there a lack of co um, coordination and maybe cooperation between the traffic department and the transport board? What no, say you, gentlemen? I would say no. No. That, that, that's, there's no lack of cooperation. So what is the problem? For example, the the, the lack of marking on the roads and so on. What what would be responsible for that? Why wouldn't uh, the transport department execute its responsibilities well, as far as this is concerned? They will have to answer that question. Very much so. Because what we do, we, rec we, rec we recommend to them at meetings, we tell them, okay, you know what, the city is not marked, the traffic lights are not working, they need to be, they need to be re um, replaced, repaired. The road markings need to be replaced. The signage which is there, which is old, some signs are defaced. They have been there for 20 years. You can barely read what's on it. We only recommend these things. The sole responsibility lies on the Ministry of Infrastructure to implement, to erect, to mark any road. And we are there now to enforce after that is done. Without that or without the markings, it makes our work difficult. And if the roads were marked, it makes my work as an investigator much more easy. How often do you have meetings between your department and the transport board? I think every week we have a meeting. Every, every week. week. I know we have representatives from our department which yeah. goes to the ministry yes, and yeah. have meetings. You know? Because the head of our department is um, part of the, 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 the board? Yes. Yes. And the board consists of how many individuals? Um, about that about I'm not how sure. many? That okay. I'm not sure. Not sure. Mm -hmm. But um, only one police officer is on that board? Only one member, only one official from the transport out of the traffic department? 
of the Royal Saint Lucia Police Force. I think there's more, about two, about two. two for the list. Yes. Y you believe that um, your lack influence, your lack <laughs> authority, as far as your work with the transport board is concerned, is a case where the board has a greater say. Oh, that's a tough question. I wouldn't, I, say, would, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Because we have a good rapport with, especially Miss Joseph, and we have a very good yeah, rapport with her. We have a very good rapport. We can call her up any time and ask yes, her anything. Yes, ask her anything. Right, then she's even, always been Even, even her, her uh, supervisors, mm -hmm. Miss, Mrs. Gould and uh, Mrs. Jo Mrs. Joseph. And Mrs. Joseph is not there anymore, but... Yeah. No, I think, what's the other lady's name? Mrs. Yes. Gustin? Mm -hmm. um, we call them up and we speak to them and we get their cooperation. We have no problems with only when it comes to the marking of the roads. No, but, I, well, the marking of the roads, I don't think it, it, it really lies with them in particular because there's a section in the ministry that actually deals with that. So, But doesn't it come within the work and responsibility of the transport board? Well, yes, it does. again, it does, mm -hmm. but we are not there, so we can't answer for them. You're watching News Make Alive once again. My guests this evening, Corporal 185 Jonathan Sergist and Constable 50 Ron Chico of the Traffic Department of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. When we come back, we'll continue the discussion and later your calls. According to reports, 19-year-old Nick Eliabox of Bexon was driving his grey Suzuki Vitara in the Moshi Grosile area when it veered off the road and capsized. Eliabox attended the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School where he graduated in 2015. The deceased was a young promising cricketer who played for the Winwards under-17 team. Eli Box is the second sports personality who has died via a motor vehicular accident for 2018. On Saturday, January 20th, about 12.30 a.m., national footballer 19-year-old Bradley Cyril and 18-year-old Brandon Santoma also lost their lives when the vehicle in which they were traveling ran off the Vidbutai Highway and crashed into a wall. Authorities have been appealing to motorists to use the roads with caution. For the DBS News World, I am Don Nicholas. Thank you very much, Don, for this report. As we continue the broadcast, News Make Alive, we are very much into the 22nd season of the program. My guests, Corporal 185 Jonathan St. Gist and Constable 50 Ron Chico of the Traffic Department of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Now, the police, they have been talking tough up to the day during a press conference. We heard from Inspector Benson de Turville and he's from the traffic department putting motorists on alert. As officers of the traffic department, we will have zero tolerance of traffic violations. We see ever so often too many drivers driving recklessly, some speeding, and of concern to us as well is the lack of driver courtesy to each other on the roads. Will the tough talk scare anyone, realizing that the lack of legislation, um, the, the roads are not properly marked, um, the police do not have the proper equipment with which to effectively perform their duties. What's your officers? Will the tough well, Tim, like the inspector said, I mean, we, there is a, there is a little that we can do, and, as, and we will do it to the best that we, of our abilities. 
like you said, we're going to have zero, zero tolerance. You see, the thing is, we have observed St. Lucians. We have a lack of respect for traffic violations, you know. Persons believe that they can park in anywhere. They can, they can park anywhere. They can drive anyhow. You understand? They can overtake anywhere. And then when you stop them and you try to correct them, they, you know, they want to flip and give attitude. You know, I mean, there are, there are instances where we can issue tickets, and we will issue tickets to offenders. We will not tolerate persons indiscriminately parking uh, um, in, in our in our city and causing obstruction. You understand? So, but people are suggesting up to today on your spin and RCI, people are suggesting that the police mm -hmm. um, are defaulters as well. Police officers, and uh, whereas using the the government's vehicle, they park anywhere. Okay, Tim. You yeah. see, you see, Tim. You must understand, and I I say that all the time. I think on every show I am, whether radio and television, I say the same thing. The law makes provisions for police vehicles are. All police vehicles or all emergency vehicles are exempted from any parking restrictions. Okay, so yes. a emergency vehicle comprised of an ambulance, a fire brigade, a police vehicle, or any vehicle used by the police officer for in the execution of his or, his or her duties for emergency purposes. for emergency purposes. So you shouldn't park on a double line because you see a police officer parked there. The police vehicle can park there. It is it is in law that the officer that the that the police vehicles are, can park because, for example, if Tim you fall sick on Bridge Street. And there's a double line there. You want, the, you, you, you want the ambulance to circle around the boulevard to get a parking before they assist, assist you? No. But that's not normally the case when you see a police vehicle being parked on a yellow line. But how, you, but, but how are you so sure? But if it stays there for um, an extended period, several hours. Yeah, but the officers... That you're yeah. attending to an emergency? No, but the officers could be dealing with a report at the station. They could be somewhere. It, you know, they have his reasons. Now, persons use these things as an excuse. But what, Most what, times what if, if the police are driving in a very erratic manner, as was shown on Facebook um, <laughs> a, few, a few weeks ago on the news? Well, Tim, I mean... And that matter, I understand, is under investigation. investigation. As police officers also, mm -hmm. we have our responsibilities is to abide by the laws also. Yes. And then, like it is under investigation, if we are contravening the law in any way, there should be avenues where officers should be penalized just, like, just as the, just the ordinary like civilian. Yes. When you have traffic accidents... Police officers are charged also for accidents. Corporal, uh, uh, what about the demerit system? Uh, we've heard the, those suggestions um, being made. I think there's a case over in Trinidad, not in Trinidad, sorry, but in Grenada. Once a person is convicted, four points will automatically be deducted. Mm -hmm. When the points reach 14, a warning is issued to the driver, and once it reaches 18 points, that driver's license will be suspended for three months. Yep. That's according to new um, regulations or the new traffic regulations over in Grenada. What about St. Lucia? The, the legislation exists in St. Lucia and it's similar, very similar to Grenada. However, for whatever reason, um, I'm not sure why it is not up and running. I remember uh, Minister Joseph stating that the demerit system will be put in place. For whatever reason, I'm not sure why or what was the issue as to why it was not implemented, but I think something had to be put in place for it to come on stream. But for whatever reason, like I said, it has not surfaced. But the demerit system is on our books. And it's been there for how long, as far as you can remember? Very uh, long time? Very long time. Yes, but, yeah. but never utilized. Not never utilized. You see, the section is there, section 179, speaks of the demerit, demerit point system. Oh. It is present. But um, the demerit points is, again, is, it's at the stage of the, where the licensing authority, in collaboration with the court, has to play their part. Okay, because we as police officers, we go on the road, we arrest offenders, we ticket them, we bring them to court, the trial, they, they're convicted. After they've been convicted, it is no longer in our hands. We have done our part. Now it's a part of the ministry and the court to collaborate and to transfer the information across so the necessaries can be done. In a good, what, in a, what I, a lot of our magistrates do that they suspend persons license for certain traffic offenses. For example, if you have an accident and you are found guilty, depending on the circumstances of the accident, it's a magistrate, I believe, it might should believe that the causes was of a reckless nature or, you know, she may suspend her license for about six months, three months to a year. And it has happened. It happens all the time. But do you, do you think we need something that's more standard, such as the demerit system? 
Yes, I believe it is. I honestly be more believe it will be very effective. Because if you get, you see, that it, it works as a, as a deterrent because you would not want your license to be suspended. If you're a bus driver and then you're, you earn your daily living by, you know, driving a bus, you wouldn't want your license to be suspended for three months or six months or a year because you'll be out of work. So I think it, it, it will serve as a deterrent. Corporal, what do you want to come out of whatever bad experience we, we're going through right now with regard to those red fatalities, the record crashes that we are experiencing in St. Lucia, and all the attention has been brought to bear on the traffic department of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, and likewise the transport board, and even to a certain extent the courts. What do you want to come out of that particular um, experience? Tim, I want a coalition of all parties. Our department, we cannot do it by ourselves. So if we we will do in our part, the ministry does their part, the court does their part, and all the wheels of motion work in tandem with each other, everything will work out just fine. So once we, we get this different sections gelling together, everything will work out good. What about the emerging problems, the use of um, cell phones? Do we also have legislation in Senusia dealing with that? There is legislation in, as in section 74 of the code. It, it, it takes care of that. However, it was challenged in, in the court and the matter was dismissed because of some loophole. So the law has now to we, we now have to revisit the law and put certain things in place. Can, also, you, can you read that? Do you have um, access to that section? Also section 48. Is it 48? Let me just double check. And that's the section dealing with the use of cell phones, right? Or yeah, well, well, section 49. Yeah, section, section 74 free says, for the purpose of this section, without due care attention, includes driving whilst using an electronic device in such a manner as to impair the driver's judgment in the safe use of the road. No. So, so what is the loophole there? And is section there 49 mm -hmm. of the regulation says, no person may wear any earphone, earplug, or other thing in his ass except a hearing aid or other medically prescribed device while driving a motor vehicle. Any person who contravenes paragraph 1 commits an offense and shall be liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding $1,000. So where's a loophole in that legislation? You see, the <laughs> you see, law is written in such a manner that um, sometimes you have to make amendments for it to be more precise. For yes. example, you know, you must include the word cell phone. You must include, you know, this. I know, for example, the regulations. There was a section which was amended, which says, if I remember clearly, that um, drivers of public service vehicles, which is omnibus drivers shall not use a cell phone in the convey whilst conveying passengers. Now, Tim, we look at the U.S., we look at other countries, and we look at how there are strict laws in the use of cell phones, prohibiting the use of cell phones, even texting whilst driving. I was listening, I was reading an article last night, I cannot remember the country, where it says that they try, they look, I think in France, they're trying to ban the use of smartphones even while you're parked, because it's distracted driving. There are persons who drive in San Lucia, it happens a lot of time. Persons drive from Grosley to Castries and they're on a the cell phone. Persons drive while, uh, drive on the text, you know, and we do not see that kind of emphasis or, or being placed here in reference to these things. It's all in the U.S., you know, we are a small country, you know, you, you can drive from one point to the other in half a day. As far as this legislation is concerned, um, those people who drafted the law, is there a deficiency on their part with regard to how the law was written in the first place? Well, Tim, Don't I you have to anticipate that the, the um, lawyers will try to find some kind of loophole in the well, law? Well, Tim, you know, laws are, are made at the time to do certain things. Mm -hmm. However, as time, changes. as time goes by and, you know... But how old is this piece of legislation? Do you know? Are you aware? Well, according to our... It's from 1995. It has been there since, yeah. 1995. The regulations are from since 1995. 95. So, mm -hmm. as time goes by, you find there's a need to revisit, revisit the laws and yes, make amendments, amendments changes to it, you know, to facilitate, to facilitate. The, the, the technicalities that come up. Because yes. according to Section 
3 in, in um, subsection 3 in section 74 the technicality there is saying that as to impair the judgment in the safe use of the road now when what the, the lawyer brought up in the court was that having the cell phone did not prevent the driver from maneuvering the vehicle in a safe manner and the magistrate accepted the, the, the submission and the matter was dismissed but the law is clear stating that it includes driving whilst using an electronic device so therefore you'd be hesitant to charge somebody who's using um, electronic device whilst driving because of that loophole definitely Tim because right now that matter that was brought to the court is now a case law. It's, it's a yeah. case it's a yeah. you know so the lawyer will just simply refer to that case and the matter will be dismissed so and it, it yeah, didn't yeah, make yeah, any yeah. sense and you understand i mean back in 1995 how many cell phones were there you know you know so as like the corporate said as time goes by you know as time progresses you have to make certain amendments you have to make certain changes to you know to deal with what we are mm -hmm. faced presently you're watching News Big Live with you for another break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls once again for my guests, Corporal 185 Jonathan Sejist and Constable 501 Ron Chico. Stay with us. Welcome back. We'll put the telephone number on screen right now so that you can call with your questions and comments for my guests. Once again, Corporal 185 Jonathan Sanchez and Constable 50 Ron Chico of the Traffic Department of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Unfortunately, as we continue to experience an increase in crashes and collisions on our roads. Good evening, Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Hello, good evening to you, caller. Hello. Hello? Okay, we seem to have lost that call. Okay. Hello, good evening. You're on the air? Hello? Hi, hello? good evening to you, caller. Yeah, hello. Good yes. night. Go ahead, please. Yes, caller. Good yeah, hello. Good night. Hi, good evening to you, caller. Good night. Yeah, I have, I have a question to the officers mm -hmm. right now. Ahead, We're talking please. about tinted vehicles. They have a lot of... I mean, there is... You're not supposed to tint your whole front of your rear screen, right? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of officers who have private vehicles that the whole rear screen is tint, and that's the private vehicle. I have no problem with 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 um people like CIDs and all them fellas. The vehicle is tint, 
that's government vehicle, that's undercover vehicle, I have no problem with that. But officers that work with the department, hello? Yes, yes, we're yes listening we're listening. Go ahead, Go ahead please. We're listening. Okay. Hello? Yeah, you made a point. Thank you so much. Let's move on. Um, let's respond to vehicles of police officers, twin tinted vehicles. Well, Tim, like I said, we as officers, we have to abide by the laws also. Because mm -hmm. if we expect civilians to abide by the law, we also should do the same. And that is something I've always said to many officers, that they should set the example. I, I own a vehicle that's not tinted, and I will not tint my vehicle for any reason, because I know it's, uh, I know it's against the law. Producer, do you have another caller line? Okay, but continue to call us once again. You're watching Newsmaker Live right here on a DBS television with my guests, and they're from the traffic department of the Hello. Resolution. Hello, good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, good caller. evening, caller. Yeah, I'm still on. Yes, yeah, continue, I'm please, caller. Mm -hmm. Talking about the officers yes. have their private vehicle and their whole front seat and nothing is happening. Okay, Thanks to, thank you very much. Yeah, okay, no problem. All right, thank you very much. Let's continue to take our calls. We await another call once again for my two guests whether you have a comment or whether you have um, a question for my guest. Good evening to you on the air. Hello, good night. I'd like good to find you. out good when night, a call. driver is driving and having his or her cell phone in their hand and is found in an accident, what is the penalty for such a, a thing like that? Because I'm seeing that every day. That is becoming a nuisance in St. Lucia, especially with the women holding the cell phone in their hand and the steering with one hand. Mm -hmm. yes, I, I so. am one of those that will be probably, I, it will be against the law because I'm going to beat up that person if they're going to smash me with their vehicle or any member of my family. It will not go down nice with me because I am very, very upset when I'm seeing people doing such a thing and they know they should not be taking part in such a thing. And the other incident, problem I have with the bus drivers. Why are the bus drivers tinting their vehicles? Their vehicles are tinted too dark. Yes. If they ask them to put it at a certain proof, at what time they get to put that so black and nobody's doing a thing about it. When I'm inside the bus, I am terrified. Mm -hmm. I cannot even see outside. So what happens if some young man holds us up in that bus? Who will see what will happen I want to know, so I need you all to act swiftly on that and go to the different bus stops and check on those drivers. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling, ma'am. What's your okay, officers? Okay, um, caller, first and foremost, I will say to you, uh, I will not encourage you to beat up anyone. So please, if you have any problems, seek the assistance of the police before you act. Reference to the persons having the cell phones in their hand, like we read earlier on, the section makes provisions for it. However, having the cell phone in the person's hand does not prevent them, according to what the argument was brought up, from maneuvering the vehicle in a safe manner. So technically, there is not anything that can be done if someone has the cell phone in the hand. Heavily tinted vehicles, the, minibuses. Uh, hold on, before... Because we have I, a call. We have a call, hold on. Hold on, my, my apologies. Let's take a call in sure. a moment. Good evening, Newsmaker Live, you're on the air. Thanks for holding on. Uh, thank you, Tim. Good evening yeah, to you. Good evening to you. Good evening, to you. Good evening uh, Corporal Constable, uh, Constable, sorry. Yes. yes. Good evening. Wonderful. Good show, very informative, very interesting at the same time. Um, puts a lot of question marks up in the air, no question about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would like to address an area of concern, and that is biking, motorcycling. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, presently the president of the St. Lucia yeah. Motorbikes oh, okay. Club. No, okay. so point. Point. And yes. um, of course, um, as I said to Tim a little earlier, I heard someone, because someone called me and said someone called his RCI program, mm -hmm. speaking about, of course, the bikers and so on and so forth. And in most cases, I am you know, proud to say that a lot of the incidents you have on the road are not subject to persons who are associated to the clubs. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, it's, a, it's persons who are outside of an organization that yes. you hear of. That's right. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, one of my concerns is that enforcement. Policing mm -hmm. is about enforcement, mm -hmm. and policing will never end. It will always continue. Mm -hmm. 
That is correct. And um, it is of importance to us that we uh, have persons taking care of ourselves because sometimes we don't want to take care of ourselves for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the ironic thing is um, when your constable spoke about Bexo and um, spoke about um, sleeping policemen and so on, the advantages and disadvantages to sleeping policemen. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it also impedes the fire service, the ambulance, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. So we have to be mindful of that in certain areas. Mm -hmm. But okay, I but hold on, hold on. If indeed, hold on, caller. Despite the argument being um, being presented by Mr. Compton, mm -hmm. do you think you'd still go ahead with putting speed bumps along the Bexo Road? Yep. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, without a doubt, we without have been doubt. clamoring for this for years. You expect of the impediment to to but to do the ambulance and emergency vehicles and so on? Yes, yes because yes. I understand mm -hmm. it's a a, a, yeah. a school zone. No question yes. about it. It's mm -hmm. a school zone, and you must have a sort of um, how could you say it? A sort of limit of speed in it's the a school zone. It's a residential area that too. is worldwide. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Joseph from the um, uh, Ministry of Transportation will tell you that I have spoken to her concerning the placement of certain pedestrian crossings, mm -hmm. not to get away from Bexor. Mm -hmm. Let's use the VG roundabout. Oh, yes. As you come oh, around yes. the roundabout, oh, yes. there are two pedestrian crossings yes. immediately exiting, exiting the roundabouts, roundabout. which should mm -hmm. not be if you look at the all. Uh, yeah, yeah. case study yeah, of yeah, the yeah, U.S., yeah. I don't have it there, on where mm -hmm. roundabouts should be placed. It's right. too close to it's the roundabout. To roundabout. So exactly. all of these things need to be reviewed. Well, that point again, caller. So is, is, is it a case where the police are saying that um, the, round, the, the pedestrian crossings is, uh, is, should not be located there? It should not be badly located. Yes. And what is the transport board saying about this? Tim, in all fairness, mm -hmm. like the caller said, the pedestrian crossings are badly located because when you just exit in the roundabout and you have to glance to your left to ensure that your, your left is clear, directly in front of you is a pedestrian crossing and science person are crossing. But it's, what, it's what a was the final say as to where a pedestrian crossing should be located? The Ministry of Infrastructure. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Yes, so that is of concern. Yes. Um, another one, if you look at the pedestrian crossings closer to Jamari, mm -hmm. um, there should be amber lights flashing there continuously, non-stop, to give mm -hmm. awareness to that location. And I we agree. can find them with our solar device, so we save the, yes. the save government, the, we save right. ourselves some money, okay? That's mm -hmm. an area um, that has what, to be what's? maintained because of the... the, the the, the location of it in the middle of a highway. Right. Again, let's interrupt. Hold on, Colin. Yes. yes, whilst um, we're on this subject of this pedestrian crossings, we did, during one of our meetings with the ministry, suggest that walkovers be placed over these roads. However, we were told that because of the, the airport, airport, yes. Oh, yes. you yes. cannot put that is correct. Yeah, that's correct. the, the, the walks yeah. Overs yeah. close okay. in that proximity. That is, so, that is definitely correct. So we're looking at what other means that could have been done. Right, and, and that's why I alluded to the amber, amber lights. lights. Amber yes. lights, yes. yes. So we have been in discussion about it, Tim. Wonderful. But going back to the Bexor situation, yes. right? This is one of my pet peeves. Castries monitors right down to Marigo Bay from a traffic standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I will give you a scenario of an issue that happened in Canada, just to give mindset. Mm -hmm. Canadians had a problem with a certain area where speeding was taking place, and they erected cardboard, not cardboard, sorry, plywood makeshift well painted that appeared to be a policeman Police with a yes, radar know. gun. Immediately it was cited that the speeding was controlled by the detection of the driver, of the appearance of a police officer, mm -hmm. he or she would break. Now, from a motorcycle standpoint, which uses less fuel, I would have my bike parked almost around the corner, on mm -hmm. the side, almost after the corner, and I would be standing lower down if I was a traffic police officer, knowing the sensitivity of that area. And every guy that slowed down deeply, I would just write down in the book his number every time. I would do it randomly off the bat. It would not be every Monday or every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And that's why, again, I alluded when I sent him a message earlier that to, in order for these things to work also, you need a system in the courts that will process traffic at a speedier if, um, 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 process, uh, uh, a faster process that will alleviate the fact that you must have the same police officer who was on the scene in that uh, court at the time proceeding because now you have now taken him off the road yes. and given an opportunity for more things to happen. Mm -hmm. exactly. But just imagine that you had that ability 
to be in that area randomly off the bat, the drivers would automatically swing around that corner and would would slow down. No, it's called a speed trap, yes. and they would just mm -hmm. believe this is a speed trap area. And mentally, you see, policing again, and that's why I stress on that word policing. Now, I don't want to take too much of Tim's show, so I want to <laughs> speak on the biking, and I want to let every St. Lucia know, as the president of the St. Lucia Motor X Club, which is the organizing body for the island ride, that this island ride will be one of a difference. It will be one with order. We're not going to tolerate because we are going to have the police assistance. I have spoken to second in command of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Mr. Daisy, mm -hmm. and um, he, uh, I have assured mm -hmm. him that we will be utilizing the police as best as we can. And persons who believe that they can come out with non-licensed motorcycles, come out with wearing slippers and come on this ride. Between the two police officers or the four police officers or what the case may be we may have on the ride, there will be no nonsense tolerated. Mm -hmm. If you want to ride behind the last police officer because you pay your money to drive on the road just like everybody else, you'll be there. Yes. But we are going to have an organized ride. And I rest assured that the visitors who are coming to St. Lucia, who are going to be actually sports tourism from Barbados, we have visitors coming, from Martinique, from Guadeloupe, yes, from Grenada, from St. Vincent, and Fathers Trinidad, because it's not just bikers coming in. You're also going to have folks participating. Is that, in, the, is that an independence ride? That is the was, independence ride. Was the date? Ride, was the date? Was with the date? monster on, trucks. You're on gonna February 22nd? The, Sorry? On February 22nd. That is on the 22nd going around the island. Okay. And we do intend to go around the island completely. Yes, that is the aim. But I believe that just like the police did a great job with seat belts, that they need to step up with the bikers who have persons behind them with no helmets because it's against the law. The same way they got every solution right now to drive with a seat belt, anything that the police would like to police and have control on, despite of the, the, the loopholes that they have mentioned, it can be done, but it has to be done continuously throughout. Okay, yes? thanks a lot. Have a blessed one. Right, quick point on the tinted vehicles, officer. Yes, um, reference to the tint, tinting of vehicles. Um, Remember the uh, caller brought yes, up scenario about the v um, uh, minibuses. Vehicles, mm. the minibuses are allowed tint, but there is a certain proof that is allowed. 20%. 20 proof is what is allowed. Good evening. This is Newsmaker Live. Go ahead, please. Hello. Yes, good evening, Tim. Hi, good, good evening, evening to you, caller. Call. Yeah, to you and your officers. Mm -hmm. Yes, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Okay, I'm just making a point about the the speed bumps along the, the highway. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest to you, some of them are real ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell which, you the point which, about which it. This section in particular are you referring to? We we had this gentleman um, that used to be on the road, um, Officer Zeus, we used to call him. Mm -hmm. You there with me, Tim? Yes, we're yes, there. We're there. Yeah. All right. This gentleman, the drivers around the area, which is, I'm calling from the south, mm -hmm. when this gentleman was around the south, every driver was intact. Okay. You go to a library, within five minutes, when you reach Beaufort, you have this on the highway, they're ready. <laughs> All right, everybody used to wear their belts and check on the speed limit. The reason why I'm saying that, because the no Zeus is around. All right, before six o'clock, you don't get no police officers probably patrolling the roads or, you know, moving around in certain areas. Like the gentleman said this, uh, before, just having a cardboard with an image of a police officer, you know, with the, the gun in hand, would allow everybody to check themselves. I know the police officers are doing the, the, what they have to do, but then in that area, they are lacking. Those bombs in certain areas, like, I've not been to Denry for a while. I went up Denry. And I'm seeing those bombs in, on that main road there. But My mother could have probably had five minutes to leave, but with those bombs on the road there, she'll die out. But, but, when we have paid police officers to do their job, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to come around with. Color. You understand? Or mm -hmm. you have the pedestrian crossings there, but then you have wardens, you know, 
you at least create some employment. All right? Yes, sir. Okay, That's just the point I wanted to make. We need you, more police officers patrolling the road. Thank you so much. What say you, Chief? I agree with the call that we need more officers on the road, but I also I will also say that, I mean, the, I mean, the drivers have a responsibility, and that is to, you know, take your time on the road. So having a speed bump on the road will slow you down. Okay, and before you before you develop speed again, you you get another speed bump. So yeah, keep you at a, a certain speed. Good evening, Newsmaker Live on the air. Hey, Tim. Good night to you. Boy. Good night to you, sir. And to Chico and um, Sergis. Yes, sir. sir. Now, Tim, I'll give, I'll give you a little prop tonight, you know, because, Tim, that is the last police department I've ever come across in the police force. Tim, they never have no radar gun. They have no decibel meter. They don't have a record. But where, we, place. but where we are getting it, caller? Uh, huh? We can't where get are it, we getting we, it from? We can't get it on our own. We are... We I are, think it's going to be some. No. Not to the traffic department, they brother. But... Caller, we, 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 we don't push our hands in our pocket and provide the stuff. We read the from department. a section that says that the minister shall and the authority shall provide devices to measure speed and intoxicating and, and, and breathalyzers. But, I'm not, sorry, but, but we, are we, are, for we have been doing that. Uh, we, we have, have been, been asking it. for it. So well, let's well, see well, that. You're, 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 you're serious. Because if you have to fight, is that the tool you need to do your work? Yes, I see a fellow riding in front of the police, no helmet. They were in their bike on one wheel. They have okay. no They have no insurance. Color. Plus, they have no license. Mm -hmm. And they're hitting people. And the police are right there. They have it. Okay, that's that, that Color, the difficulty, yeah. you must understand the difficulty that we face with motorcycles. Uh. We'll all understand and we'll all agree that a motorcycle is in itself is a very small vehicle. Uh -huh. We on the road in traffic, you on the street, we have a bright green, as you see us there, both of us are in bright green. The riders will see you from afar, and by the time they see you, they, they just make a U-turn and, and they go around. We'll not run after them in town. So that, man, that is the difficulty that, is the difficulty that we face. Route. Drivers by don't spot. stop. Bikers the police don't stop. Turning right there. The police are standing right there. And the first person shows the road by court there. You mean the police can't stop the fellas? But they will not stop, caller. They will not stop? They will well, not no, stop. No, they, they will not they stop. They will ride off. You, you, you think you'll be able... Caller, you think you'll, you think you'll be able to make a difference where this is concerned if you are a, a police officer? <laughs> How would you, no, no. How would you tackle this particular issue? The same way the police going to read and stop, How, stop fellas. I'm asking you. How would you tackle this particular issue? A motorcyclist. Okay, Tim, one day, Tim, you get up, you have your block. You both have a bad community. Stop them. Right. And you stand in the middle of the road. But, right. No, no. You have barricade by my brother. Call up, <laughs> when we have the roadblocks, mm. you see, bikers will stop, but only when they are cornered. Exactly. Eh? Bikers will stop when, only when they are cornered. If they approach you on a the roadblock, they must stop. But okay, and, and they can escape. Them. And then when we have roadblocks, we, we, we confiscate many bikes, we arrest persons, we charge them. But mm. on a day-to-day -day basis in the city, drive, a man driving on Bridge Street, he sees you at the junction, he sees you, he knows he might stop him, he might just turn around and just go somewhere else. Uh, and that is the difficulty have, that you face. Have even rode up a one way to yes, avoid Yes, avoid yes. us. You know, they turn, they go up a one way street just to avoid the police. Yeah. Tim, let me tell you, tell me. You're, you're, Tim, you're, you're breaking up, eh? I find you're breaking up. You're, 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 you're Tim? Okay, thank yes. you so much. You're, you're breaking up on TV, you're, you're fluctuating. All right. All right. We're going to take your calls once again. You're watching a Newsmaker Live right here on a DBS television with my guests. Corporal 185 Jonathan Sergist and Constable 50 Ron Chico. I'm told that we have to take our final call right now. Good evening, you're on the air. Yeah, good night to everyone. Hi, good, good night, night to you, sir. I just want to make something clear. Okay, there's a feedback. The television yeah, set is on. Me, let, me bring, let me bring on the volume. Yes, turn on the volume and then you can continue the contribution. Okay. Yes, caller, go ahead. What I want to say is that I want to know what is in place for the police officers, what law is in, pla in, in, in place for the police officers that drive their vehicle without stickers. Um, they're I private could, vehicles? Could, yeah, they're private vehicles, private vehicles. Mm. Um, I, I could remember, because I'm always on the road, and I could remember I saw Mr. Chico himself with a white um, Honda without a sticker on his windscreen. So, Tim, Tim, I want to know what example, as a police officer, you set for young people trying 
but well, when the officers themselves trying to allow persons not to drive, you know, without their stickers, without their insurance. So I want to know what is in place and what they're going to say tonight there as to what I have to say there. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you so much. What's okay, the um, officer um, Chico? Let me no, answer. No, no, before, no, you, answer. before you answer, um, I will say that the law, he, he asked what law is in place. But the law is there for all and sundry. Whether you are police officer, magistrate, judge, the law is there for all and sundry. Okay? So, go ahead. What the caller must understand also is, Tim, I mean, there are times where the ministry, they have a shortage of stickers, and we get that all the time. Up to some time ago, the system was down for about two or three days yes, where yes. persons could not pay the license or whatnot. So that, so, um, you know, that is expected. But it's not to say I've, I've owned my, my vehicle has always been insured, always been licensed from the time I've owned it. You understand? I don't drive my vehicle not licensed or not insured. Now, if you see me driving a vehicle that's a, that doesn't have a sticker, then you should ask me a question. I will tell you, well, I went to the ministry, they have no stickers now. They said they have no stickers. And it happens all the time. Okay. We meet drivers on the road almost every day okay. and on a daily basis and on a regular basis will tell you that they pay the license, they can show you the they show you the receipt, but they don't have a sticker because they don't have available at the time. No. So you cannot say because you saw me driving a white Honda without a sticker that I'm breaking the law. No. We, we, we just ask some ask some more questions. I, I always tell people that there's always circumstances that causes things. Because when this has happened in the past, what we used to do, we used to tell them, we told the ministry that to give persons a letter indicating that they do not have stickers, stickers at the time, at the time mm -hmm. and when it's available that they can come back to get it. I have been, I have had the experience. I had to wait until they got stickers exactly. and, and believe you me, I was stopped by my colleagues and I explained to them because the location that I was, the individual that stopped me didn't, didn't know me and I was happy that they did. And I was happy to pull my documents out of my glove compartment and produce it and show the officer in question. And when I was done, I said to the officer, I am so and so. And then I left. So it, it's not a matter of, you know, just looking at things and thinking that what it is, that's what you may think that it is. Final comments, let's start with you, Constable. Final comments from you. Well, my appeal for the remainder of the year is for the drivers at all times we try our best to drive in a responsible manner okay let us ease up the gas a little bit and uh, apply more what of what we've been taught at defensive driving and if we do so pedestrians also we should you know when we are using the roads you know be very cautious Passengers on, 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 on vehicles, motor omnibuses, when you realize a driver, and people must understand that it is the, re the responsibility of the passenger also. You know, if you realize that the bus driver is driving erratically on the road, you have to pull him up, bring it to his attention. Sometimes he's doing something, he's not even aware of it because he's so used to it. Tell him you're not too feeling comfortable and he must slow down. Cop um, Corporal Sergist. Now, just to kick off from where um, Mr. Chico ended. Do you know, Tim, that with one person making the comment to the driver that he's doing something wrong, that other persons on the bus quarrel with that one person? Yeah. So how can things be right when this happens? Your life may be at stake because of something that the driver is doing wrong, and this one person is trying to get it corrected, but you want to quarrel with this person. So this is where all the problems start. My appeal here tonight is to ask all motorists, do not drive for yourself alone. Drive for others, including pedestrians, things that is on the road. Exercise tolerance, patience, and do what is required according to law when it comes to traffic so that we can have a safer road network. Corporal Sejis, thank you so much for being my guest. Thank and you for having Constable me. Chico, thank you so much for being my guest. And to you, thank you so much for watching the broadcast and contributing via your calls. If it's Wednesday, it's Newsmaker Live. Time now for the clip that peaked.
<laughs> and that's the broadcast. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Timothy Polio. See you next time and good night.